everyone, it's uh, Doc Fire, and it's time for the final, or close to the final installment on the N Autococker Grip Frame from Numec Products, or Numec, or however it's pronounced. Um, but before I get going, I want to kind of do a quick shout out to some folks um, that have answered some questions for me and made some suggestions in the last uh, few videos that I've done. Uh, one is to uh, Andy um, uh, from uh, Numec. He's the designer of this, and Andy, I'm going to screw up your last name. I think it's uh, Dubuck. Um, correct me if I'm wrong there. Uh, the also is uh, another shout out is to uh, Jake from uh, Bearded Works, and Jake gave me some uh, some tips and su some suggestions that he uh, and he was one of the I think one of the first or one of the people that helped in the designing of this. Also, uh, Frank Silva Coa. You guys all know him. Uh, he did the first video that I saw on this uh, of a production one. Um, and then obviously uh, Shane Burns, Washington Rain out of uh, Washington State. Uh, thanks Shane for sending me the link that these were for sale because I've been waiting and I just didn't catch it and I was able to get one order right away. Um, anyway, thanks for all those folks. Uh, pretty outstanding folks if you've ever met them. They're great people. But let's go into kind of the details and some of the things that um, that I really like. You guys saw the shoot, shooting video. Um, it shoots good, uh, it shoots really good. Um, I like the trigger and we're gonna talk about the trigger um, a little bit more. I'm gonna do some comparisons with some other trigger frames that I have sitting off to the side here. I wanna talk about uh, grips and then I wanna talk about the regulator. Uh, but Let's start off and, and kind of go through just a general how I feel about the total package. All in all, this is a very nice product. It's very well made. Um, it is, uh, the components are, are, this isn't something that's just going to break and it's junk and it's not going to work. This is a good product. Um, there are some pros and cons to every product out there, folks. And, uh, and that's kind of my job. I kind of look at that and hopefully they make some tweaks for version two to, uh, to, to maybe uh, work on some of those suggestions and stuff like that. One of the things I'm not gonna dig a lot into is how consistent the regulator is. I have a belief that any new regulator has a break-in period and it's hard to really judge a regulator uh, on its consistency until it's kind of broken in and you you have you know a couple cases of paint through it and, and, and that's my That's just kind of my thing. I, I don't want to judge on it This what I've noticed with the paint that I'm shooting and stuff like that. It seems to be fairly consistent I did notice that I had a um, My feet per second dropped after shooting for a while that to me tells me that the reg has kind of see it set in a little bit and I need to adjust it again, so I'm not really going to go down that. That's why you didn't see a shoot over the chronograph. Um, uh, I initially set up to 285 with that Nelson, Nelson Anarchy paint, and um, it shot really good. And then when I went to shoot it over the chronograph after doing, doing several shots with it, uh, probably a couple hoppers through, I noticed that my velocity had dropped uh, from 285 to about uh, 260, so about 20 feet per second uh, consistently. And then it's always... You know, I'm not going to do how many shots you get and all that. That's with now pressed air and, and fields that have systems. That's to me, that's not as important. But anyway, let's go through uh, some comparisons on how I feel this trigger feels compared to um, other triggers that are out there. And I and, and my comparison are are frames that I own um, or frames that I've that I've had. And I can tell you right now, this is a, it's a little, I don't want to say a stiffer trigger pull. It's not stiffer. It's just, it's a little stronger spring, but it's not super strong. It's not one of those feather light triggers. But as you guys saw in the video, um, my last video, the, the breakaway is a really nice. And I, and I think that's due to an increased ramp in there. Um, I think on my next video, when I take, tear this apart, kind of show the internals and to do some polishing on this. Um, I'll have some comparison frames out here or uh, slider uh, plates to see if that ramp's increased or not. Um, but there's something different there. It could be that the, the titanium nitrate, uh, and if I pronounced that wrong, um, sear, it could be uh, uh, that material, I don't know. Uh, but 
all in all it's really nice and on my I think my first or second video I talked about how it had a I don't want to say gritty but it's that kind of that that fresh metal on metal feel um, with these brass tip screws on the bottom of the plate and I said it would probably that would probably go away you can polish those uh, and then you can screw them back in and it should clean that up um, but after just shooting this for a little while it's really these two surfaces have kind of made it up with each other and it's really nice so it's uh, even with shooting a you know two or three hoppers of uh, paint through it it's uh, it's really gotten nice and I really like the feel of this trigger I think it feels really good I think it breaks really nice it cycles really nice and being that um, it's on in, in my opinion one of the shortest three ways out there um, for my testing is, is these oracles or they're right on par with with several other ones uh, it's it's really nice it's nice the only probably complaint I would have is that with this really short uh, it's not a complaint it's just the only thing I would do different is a is a rear trigger stop and I talked to Andy about this uh, yesterday in some um, we were kind of chatting back and forth on Facebook Messenger, and uh, he kind of laughed about. It. He said, "Yeah, it's pretty tough to get it in here." And, and we we talked about some different ideas. And um, I don't know if he's going to do it even, but uh, you know that's it's his business. So, um, but whatever. He, uh, and it, it's kind of the vein of existence is getting trigger pull. But there is one thing: is when you really kind of strive for that really really short trigger pull, it actually becomes almost, in my opinion difficult to pull the trigger because you you have a forward stop and a back stop and if it's if your trigger movement and your sear movement all that happens in a really short distance and it's a stop to stop it's actually really taxing on your finger because you're you're pulling back and you're, you're you're pulling to that hard stop and uh, having it to where it fires and then it has like a deacceleration uh area where you figure you're not jamming your finger back uh, it actually makes a little bit more comfortable trigger. So is it cool to have the shortest trigger pull? Yeah, it is. Um, but is it always that practical? In my opinion, not necessarily. I think you could shorten this a little bit and still be very practical. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, that's, that's here or there. And everyone has their own preference. So this trigger, I think, will allow for a lot of different preferences. I think in future there will be some, you can do some mods to this. Um, and to make a couple changes if you want to to get your trigger the, the trigger feel that you like and um, and I think he uses this his plate is based on the standard uh, size so I, I I imagine I could probably pull this plate out and put it in another frame I don't know uh, but I'll look at it and see if I can uh, one of the things and the reason I did the shout out to to Jake from Bearded Works is Jake's had messaged me and and I don't really know Jake um, uh, it's the first time I really met him, and he said, hey, did you have to shorten um, the length of your three-way? Let me grab another three-way shaft real quick. Around here somewhere. Of course, it's buried. And what he was talking about is that I have to shorten this length, because on a standard frame, this can slide all the way through. If I can actually get it into this, that's not a good frame. There we go. It fits in this one. It goes all the way through, and on, and so um, he asked me if I if I had to shorten it, and I go, well, I didn't notice a problem with it, and and he was I think using an Inception Designs uh, uh, three-way shaft that may be a little longer there, and I said I didn't know a difference because remember it goes into a blind hole so it's it doesn't poke all the way through because the air passage is on the other side and I said you know I, I didn't I didn't notice an issue I didn't I didn't think I had to and uh, he said he had to on the inception designs one and um, so I took a little closer look at it this morning and it's not because you use an inception designs it's because if I can get this in there and if you can see this it's kind of going out at an angle it it is it's all the way in but I would probably have to shorten it it didn't change any performance up here I think it's just flexible enough that it was fine but it's not that big of a deal you could uh, you could take this three-way shaft off this one I'd probably have to shorten you know maybe a sixteenth of an inch I'm thinking 
if you can see that I'm trying to find a good uh, maybe that right there that's a good angle uh, maybe a 16th inch that's a little higher here um, I didn't notice any performance it didn't leak at all um, these three ways are pretty pretty good for not leaking so um, you may have to shorten that not the end of the world for folks it's not going to affect this uh, three-way uh, shaft it's um, even if you were to go put it on another uh, frame it's not going to affect it uh, so you could get a file and you could file that down if you had a dremel you could dremel it down um, if you have a sanding wheel disc you could disc it down either which way you can you can uh, you can get that uh, set down and so that may be something you want to want to look at so <clears throat> outside of that you know everything functioned fine for a one day trial on this so let's look at some other frames that I have out there and um, and I'm gonna go to kind of my 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 stamp with the frame that I believe is um, to me the industry standard for out of the box a really nice frame and this is the bell cells angry frames with the bell cells roller sears and then and quite frankly I have the aka um, a trigger plate in here which fits in here really nice and it's just a there's no side to side wobble it's just a really good fit and uh, although there is a little side to side wobble in here I don't really care about that that's that's it's so minor it's not a big deal um, uh, these frames to me are the kind of the this is what I'm trying to get to when these are properly set up and you have uh, either nylon tip or brass tip shoes polished roller sear polished plates all that nice stuff these are just a very good feeling uh, frame and um, and so I, I always kind of use this as my as my benchmark, my second benchmark, and a lot of you guys are going to laugh. Uh, some people hate A and S, um, A and S quick fire frames. Um, they're the worst frame ever. And if you have these, you should just ship them to me, and I'll destroy them for you. Um, but A and S frames, um, I've always really liked, and I thought that they uh, they did a really good job on their own trigger plate and and stuff like that it's it's always been a really good frame and out of a box this was like a, a product that you could buy and out of the box it was a trigger job on your gun and there was a mark improvement because this came with the three-way shaft it came with a um, a lug for your hammer and then the frame like this and it was uh, I think it was like $99 uh, what this was and to me, it was just an instant performance uh, increase on your autocarker, especially if you bought an autocarker with plastic, which a lot of the lower ones did. Uh, this was, it, to me, even better than the autocarker frames that came with aluminum uh, uh, frames initially. But anyway, uh, so those the bell cells and angry frame, and then the um, the A and S quick fire to me are uh, or were for the longest time the frames. There wasn't anyone else making stuff out there until obviously New Mech. We have Inception Designs uh, or the Empire Frames, which um, uh, worked on a little bit of the uh, a different uh, style of trigger plate. And and I really like the Inception Frames. I think they're really well built. They're very comfortable for large hands. But this is not about Inception Frames. Um, but <clears throat> when I look at a comparison of how this frame feels compared to an exception now this is an exception with it's got that uh, the ramp trigger plate not a ramp it's got the, I call the speed bump trigger plate uh, so this is very snappy this shoots and feels or this shoots and feels similar to this but with a ramp style plate so it's got a really crisp break and that break is like a snap back and it kind of snaps your finger back and it makes it very quick so I think it's really nice for those quick quick firing and uh, like I said as Koa um, uh, mentioned how uh, in his videos how quick that break was and I know that I think Koa made some suggestions early on in the production or the uh, the pre-production runs of these some, on some some trigger modifications um, so it is really 
really nice when it comes to trigger pull. I think it's it's on par with uh, with these frames, which are what I call st uh, standard frames um, that are bolt-on upgrades. Right? It's like a, a, a notice performance upgrade uh, for for all these frames. Uh, now, when you go to stuff that um, and where it's a little bit more custom, so here's my my works frame, and I've done a lot of a lot of work on this frame where I've really polished this trigger out. Uh, this is a really nice frame, but you're not. This doesn't come out of the box from the factory like this. They they weren't this nice. Um, so I think what you're getting is you're getting a trigger job. So so when we look at this 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 frame in, in two components, one is the trigger mechanism and a slider frame. And the second is is the hoseless design or the macroless uh, gas through frame design is the second um, component. And um, so we kind of look at those as two different things. As the the frame itself, this is an upgrade and it's a worthwhile upgrade. And so I'm not gonna it it feels good. The trigger shoe is nice and big, so people that have big fat fingers, it's comfortable. I think we'll take standard trigger shoes. Someone comment below if they have one of these and they've tried a, a standard trigger shoe. Uh, kind of one of the options if you want to do a, a rear travel stop is you could probably get one of the Palmer's trigger shoes that has the uh, the rear trigger strap screw that's in it that's milled out. And you could probably put one of those on there. I don't know. So when it comes out of the box, it feels nice. and I. The meteor frame here, and my meteor is nice. Um, there's things I don't like about the meteor, but uh, uh, this I think is is a nicer feel than the meteor. Um, it's hard to compare because this is a whole different uh, style. Actually, I like these uh, the Inception designs with the um, the Delrin trigger plates in it. So that's another thing. Um, Delrin trigger plates. Um, when I when I did the uh, and I don't have it sitting here. I did the gunfighter frame review and had the metal trigger plate. Uh, that plate has a certain amount of weight, and they had pretty st they had stiffer springs in there to I think support their mechanism. And I thought it was a nice frame. You could do a really short trigger pull on it, um, and uh, it had some drawbacks and. Um, Dan from Killshot Customs did a short run of Delrin trigger plates that were replacement plates for that frame, and I have one. And it, it made as to me it was a night and day difference in that frame. And I'm curious. I know that uh, you know I've seen the videos on uh, Numex site where he shows uh, wire uh, wire EMD and correct me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, cutting these trigger plates out and cutting the little slots for the bearings, stuff like that. You know, if you were to maybe have two versions of this or an option, maybe as a as a little less expensive for I don't know if it's less expensive or whatever is to try a Delrin plate in here and I'd be curious to see what it felt like um, because then I don't think you would necessarily need those roller bars on the top I think the Delrin alone would would do that but anyway just food for thought um, so for the aspect of the trigger pull and the sear release um, you know I would rate this um, as uh, as my trump you know uh, but you know you can get five out of five on trumps um this is a five out of five on my on my trump rating i think uh, uh it's amazing trigger pull and it's getting better as i wear it in and i think I, let me do this with so 4.5 because i think i can improve on it just by some minor polishing stuff stuff that would cost the manufacturer a ton of money to uh, to do all this polishing, to, it's kind of like the call the custom polishing. Like when you buy, a, you know, a new car, uh, there's some mods that you can do that the manufacturer's just not going to do because it it just would rise the raise the cost of that uh, of that product because it's all this extra labor and it's really nice, you know, the box. So I think with some minor uh, polishing and stuff like that, I think uh, that I can even make this even nicer and. Um, uh, which is which is cool because I like stuff that I can tinker on a little bit, but anyway, um, let's move on to grips and uh, the pros and cons on grips. And so 
um, when I looked at putting some grips on this thing, I went and grabbed a whole bunch of different grips and all that stuff, right? I had a bunch of different stuff, and, and I've always kind of been partial to, to die grips, and um, here's a set of uh, A&S grips that are wraparounds, and here's Hogue, or Hogue style, and then the Hogue uh, palm swells, and here's some really cool uh, plastic, they just like kind of look cool, the die grips, uh, Inception design grips, and kind of stuff that you can still get, right? So let's flip it over. And so one of the things that I did, it's the first thing I put on there is I had a pair of die grips sitting there, and I slipped these on, and I noticed that there's a couple things. And I'm going to try to zoom in here. Couple things. You have this air passage, and I'm going to try to line this hole up. I think it's lined up close enough. You have this air passage here, and you can see that this grip rubs up against it. It's a little far forward here. Everything is everything lined up? Yeah, let me make sure everything is lined up here. And so it rides up on that. Not the end of the world. And, I, and you know, I don't know if you'd be able to do anything with that. The other thing is, is this grip, it overhangs back here. And then it overhangs down here. And so it doesn't really fit this frame. It kind of looks awkward. So I go, well, let me put the a &S on there. Because a &S doesn't have, or to put this up there, doesn't have this far forward and doesn't have this big tang in the back. And when I put it on there, it actually had a little gap right here. It fit here fine, had a little gap right here. Uh, and so that I didn't really like that. So I go, well, let me look at the Inception Designs grips. And I put these on here. And these, um, if I get everything lined up here, they had the same issue. They were tall. They bend up on that. And then they have a big gap up here. And I go, well, these aren't going to work. So um, I said, well, let's look at the die. And here's just some die ones. Well, they were the same issue. I try to put these on here. And these are the kind of the harder plastic ones. They're right up here. This tank's back there. So that's out. So I want these really cool, just standard um, 45 grip frames. These are for firearms. And although this is plastic, I put it on. And I think it actually, I get everything to line up here. It covers all the holes. It doesn't affect with that. It barely overhangs here, and although these look kind of cool, I think they're a little cheap plastic, I always thought they looked cool. I go, here is probably some of my favorite large hand grip panels, uh, especially for benchmark frames, if you don't want wraparounds. And they're the Hogue Palm Swell. And these fit, if I can get these on here, they fit. They still have a little bit of a push up there, but they. Oh, let me let me put this on here. Just. A, I think I got everything lined up. I got to get the holes where I can see them. Yeah, there we go. They push up a little bit, but not that noticeable. And I could probably trim the back side of that, but these actually fit and they look really good. And so I went to the Hogue wraparounds, and these are probably a Hogue knockoff wraparound, and to see how they fit. And these ones for wraparound, to me, fit the best. They look good. They have a little bit of an overhang down there. Let me zoom back out here. And uh, But they fit the best. All right. So I think uh, for, for grip rise, I would stick with, like, the Hogue. Uh, stuff you get from gun stores, stuff like that. They fit the best on there. Uh, the die stuff kind of looks funny. Granted, you could trim this stuff back on the off on the die stuff, and um, and you know make it fit. Uh, the Inception designs uh, they work fine. You can do some trimming on that. They're really soft, pliable rubber, but they're a little loose in the front. And then the ANS will work, but there's a little gap. When you put these on, there's a little gap up here. So all in all, um, on the grip-wise, um, you're kind of limited to the Hogue or the 45-style, standard 45-style 
or standard 45 wrap around um, type grips, which aren't bad. These are great grips. They wouldn't be making them to this day if they weren't that good. Um, so, you know, that's that's one thing that uh, that you want to look at. So for that, um, you know, pretty pretty cool. Now, um, <clears throat> let's talk about this front grip. Uh, I think I talked a little bit about this in the last video. Uh, he has, and I showed the, the the different styles they have. For me, larger hands, I think I'd want the the four, but it's going to be preference. So. Um, you know, it's kind of hard to say which one do you buy first. Uh, well, think about the rag that you currently have on there. And let me give a tape measure here. And so if I look at from the bottom of the frame to the end of this regulator, it's three and a half inches. Okay. So if you measure your regulator and your, like here, here I have one here. So if you measure this, it's about five inches for War Games rag on a standard body. So if you like getting a lower lower grip, you like that full full grip, you may want to go with the four inch version of that. Food for thought, you know, just uh, things to think about. And um, but those are those are things you're going to want to think about. All right. So that kind of. Um, entails a lot of the frame stuff. Actually, no, there's one other thing, and this is a con on the frame. So, like I said, is I, I really like the frame. It's comfortable, nice palm swell. The one thing I don't like, and I'm gonna zoom in here, see if I can get in here. And you can see a little bit of, little bit of dust right there. I'm gonna wipe that away. And that's for me running my, my dry ass finger back and forth on this, okay? Both fingers, away. and so this edge, right here and especially where the screw goes in it's sharp okay so so Andy if you're if you're watching this this is probably my biggest complaint is that uh, I think if you if you have some unannoed frames um, is to maybe chamfer that just a little bit it's just very uncomfortable on the finger so if you're wearing gloves and a lot of players do wear gloves when they play I don't I don't like wearing gloves I hate it um, you're not going to notice it, okay? But it's just right there, and it's very indicative of this frame, which is the the media frame. This is why I don't use this frame that much, because it's sharp right here. It's uncomfortably sharp, and um, I just don't like it. Uh, it's a nice frame. I, I just don't like that. It's uncomfortable. I have some suggestions. You can put a little bit of that uh, athletics tape here. Uh, you use some Sioux glue um, to... To put in this hole down here and just kind of plug it with some rubber sugru and then you can pick it out of there when you're done and um, you know but that's um, that I don't like and the other sharp spot on it is right back here that little area there is sharp and you notice it with your palm it's not bad I can just feel that little sharp spot and I don't know if they could they could take take this line and just arc it down instead of this curve like that so it just makes it sharp kind of uncomfortable so outside of that I don't notice any other sharp areas on the gun that I that are that are uncomfortable um, it's or me on the on the frame that are uncomfortable it's um, it's pretty nice the safety I talked about the safety in the other other video it's really good so let's talk about the ASA and uh, the on off or excuse me the on off and the regulator and like i said earlier the regulator i'm not going to do an efficiency test i'm not going to do how consistent it is because i truly believe that uh, all regulators need a little bit of time to break in uh, if you ever bought a palmer st uh, stabilizer uh, that's one of the things they say they say look at shoot about a case of paint through it and you'll notice that the regulator will sort of calm down. You'll be adjusting it, and finally you'll find that sweet spot of that regulator, and it just is very consistent, and everything is kind of worn in. And they say the same thing. As soon as you replace the O-rings, you're going to have to go through that same process. It's like the O-rings are seating themselves in and kind of wearing in. I, I think the same thing is with, with any regulator. 
to a certain degree that you got to allow a little seed in time. And and this one I, I you know I'm going to give the same the same thing. Um, the uh, the on off besides this little sharp spot back here, the kind of sharp edges feeling um, is pretty simple. It takes an eighth inch takes an eighth inch uh, screw to uh, to to do the um, it goes through the on off here. Um, the only thing uh, that actually adjusts the regulator. Um, the only thing I don't like about the on off, and I know that like in his manual, and by the way, you're going to get this big giant manual or just two page manual, it's not giant. And he talks about, and he does a video too, he talks about the, 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 the pressing pin in here. And he says some tanks you'll need to shorten that pin. And, um, and I didn't have an issue. I used a Ninja tank that has a, a pin and I used, let me grab it. So this is the first tank that I just did some initial testing with and it has this type of a pin and the pin is essentially flush with the top of the cap here and uh, there's the other style the tank that I used with testing that we shot with it uh, because it's the Aerolite and this is the HK Armory version of it and its pin is flush with the top I like this regulator I like it over the Ninjas because I think it's more consistent um, Ninjas I've had more problems with lately. I don't know why. And so this was my, my testing regulator. And this is my just fun regulator. Now Ninja has the ball valve uh, style. And I know he says you can do some adjustments on that. Uh, that's why the pin's a little bit longer. But if your pin sticks out further than the top of the bonnet, then you'll probably need to shorten that a little bit. Um, now... <clears throat> One other thing that I noticed is that this on-off knob uh, comes all the way out. So um, I don't ever expect you to lose it in the field um, because it's it's kind of it's under pressure. That pin is pushing back against this when you're depressing a, a ball valve, or excuse me, the uh, the the pin. Uh, but what I did and I don't know if I, I don't think I heard anything by doing it. I put a number 011, basically 11 O ring. It seemed to fit in there perfect. It's kind of loose. And it seemed to just fit in there perfect. And I notice when I screw this down, put my finger in there. So, like right about there, the, the pin on the inside is about flush and it's not protruding. And then it starts to protrude. And then you see where this O-ring kind of acts like a cushion, and it kind of locks this in the in the place. There's a little friction, and it's kind of nice. It's kind of like a nice stop. I noticed for these two tanks that was perfect, and I really liked it. I just thought it kind of looked like it needed an O-ring. It doesn't show that in the manual. It doesn't show that it's an O-ring, and actually his video doesn't show anything. But it didn't affect performance, so uh, maybe that was a little mod that I did before I I did all this testing. Um, but I didn't notice any performance change changes in it. So uh, the tank, the tank screw on really good. I didn't have, I tried three or four different style tanks. Sometimes you get the tanks where this O-ring bonnet area is a little larger diameter and they're hard to screw in. Um, on some of the, some ASAs, this didn't have any issues. So it's machine correct on that aspect, which is really nice. And uh, you know, I think the biggest complaint the, you know, obviously the pros on it, there's no macro line, right? You you lose the macro line, which is really nice. It's one less place that you're going to have leaks in those, in those stupid hoses or the hose is going to, uh, you know, break or burst or something like that. That's gone. That's amazing. And that's really nice. When, when you saw the, the other manufacturers on the e-guns out there starting to go through you know changing that over i just i really like that design i think they i'm glad we're we have some options for autocockers on that um but there was one thing i felt really um during this full pull process of testing this thing it just it didn't feel right so my first mod was actually just to put a macro line in it and uh, i couldn't get it to, to work that well uh, it leaked a lot of air when i when i did this but you know, it made me feel better 
that I had an extra trigger guard down here and I feel safer. So anyway, I know it's just a joke, but uh, I actually sent a photo of that to Koa and he, he laughed at me. He thought it was pretty funny. But anyway, uh, there's my, my sappy humor. Um, so let's kind of talk about uh, uh, the, the pros, the overall pros and cons of this. Um, so pros, I've already kind of went through how much I like the trigger. Uh, it's well built. The, the quality is there. You can feel it. Um, uh, this is, uh, it was easy to install. Uh, it was not difficult. There, um, it, it functioned nice. It has a really snappy trigger. Um, there's room for customization. Custom, kind of customize a little bit. Um, the uh, uh, regulator seems to work fine. It's easy to adjust. It's a micro adjuster. And, and before I forget this on the regulator, it's set from the factory about 325. And I was talking to Andy last night and I go, hey, what's the low and high on this? And he says, with a different spring, he can go up to 700, but he didn't see there's any need for it uh, for, for most guns out there. He put the right spring in for autocockers. And on the low side, he says it's down to about 100 uh, PSI. If you get down to that 100 PSI, he says it's going to have a slow refresh rate. So, um, you know, most autocockers are in that, uh, let's say on the low side, 250, and on the high side, 425. Uh, or 400. Now the relief uh, valve here is set at uh, I think it's like 425 psi to relieve pressure. So if it's getting a leak out of this, it's just, uh, set above 425. Um, the other thing is when you um, so anyway, so that's the that's the pressure range on that. Um, I couldn't get it below 250, but my gauge uh, was off, and I think uh, that I may not have set everything right. So. But he said it's between 100 and uh, 425 before it, it releases pressure. Or, and so that's what this is uh, kind of set to do. In that lower range, it's going to have a little slower um, response time and uh, stuff like that. My Always my concern with this is, is volume. How much volume are we losing that we used to have in the front end of this and in here? You know, Do we lose any volume? Uh, is that going to affect anything on some of these uh, some of these valves? Um, in my initial chronographs, I didn't see any uh, mass swings in that. And even when I fired some strings, I didn't see any balls that were dropping off. Like I'm I'm getting getting drop off. Like it's not uh, the regulator's not keeping up with it. So I didn't notice anything that was obvious when I was shooting strings. All the balls seem to be going the same distance and having the same type of whatever air issue of crappy paint or whatever so uh, the regulator seems to be doing what it's doing and like I said is is I think it will get better through time as um, as it seats in so pros this is a good frame folks it was relatively easy to install although I always recommend if you're not good at installing stuff is have an airsmith do it for you or someone or a store or whatever but uh, for the price, and I want to say these are what three, uh, three fifty, you know, shipped, depending on which options you get. Uh, the Inception Designs frames uh, that do not have a regulator or any other frame out there, um, I think uh, they're on the, the 225 range, and um, and then the Gunfighters around the same price, and then you got to buy a then you have a regulator. That you have to have you have the macro line so if you're looking at doing a build uh, this is actually a cheaper route to go um, if it was just the frame and i you know this frame is is comparative to the other high-end stuff out there and i think uh on some regards it's a little bit better on some of it but uh, they all have their own feeling and everyone kind of likes what they like in a frame this to me is really nice. Um, so, total package, it's a definitely a four and a half trumps um, out of five on that. And the reason it doesn't make a five, okay? There's there's about 
three or four different things that doesn't make the reason why it doesn't make a fly. One is this sharpness here, drives me nuts. Uh, second is a little sharpness back here. Uh, third is kind of a boring, just just a design thing for me. This is kind of it's just big, and it granted it's nice for gloves and stuff like that, but it's just it's big, but it's pretty simple. I think people could could make these, and they could be an aftermarket. Um, two on, it's pretty simple screw and knob. Uh, and then third is when I when I saw the word gloss on the anno. And uh, let me back up. The anno is really nice anno. It feels really good. Okay, it feels like quality anno. It doesn't it just feels like they that whoever their anodizer is they do a good job. But this is there's no polish to it. It's it's not dust. And it's not, I don't think fresh machine, it's just halfway between. It's like a it's like a semi-gloss. And um, and so if you're putting this on a gun that's shiny, it's gonna look funny. Right? It's gonna be this one part that, that looks funny. The black's a nice black, it's just it's not a purple black, it's a nice black. Um, so the anodizer is using good uh, good dyes. But I'm just kind of disappointed on that. I was really hoping for a nice shiny gloss, but you know, if I look at, uh, yeah, this ANS isn't as shiny. I can't find it. Oh. So here's Inception Designs. If I can bring up, and and they don't market a gloss. It's about the same. Inception Designs a little bit more dusty. This has got a tiny bit more gloss, but not much. So it's very similar to the Inception Designs, kind of their matte or semi-gloss finish, which is fine, which makes it a great player. And uh, so this is a great player piece, that, which is really what needs to happen with this. Uh, but the thing that sucks about it is that if someone's building a really nice gun, and I don't know, maybe he's gonna have some raw versions of these available. If he does, I'm gonna order one and I'll have it custom anodized and I'll put it on a gun that I wanna build. Um, but I kinda really like the gloss. Um, so I so I'm gonna give you a ding on that. You're not gonna get a five out of five, and, and I don't think anyone really gets a five out of five on everything. There's a couple things that uh, the other things is just if it was polished, you just see some minor milling lines here, and that stuff kind of goes away. Uh, and that it's just minor stuff, not the end of the world. It doesn't it doesn't take away from performance. It's just an appearance thing. Um, so that would that, that's why it doesn't get a five out of five trumps. It gets a four point five out of out of five trumps. But a four point five is good. It's really good. This this is this is something that's worthwhile to spend your money on. This is worth the money. Okay. So uh, with that, uh, I think I got everything. I made my uh, shout outs to the folks that I needed to shout out to and say thanks for for, for your support and help. And hey, like or subscribe this page, folks, please. And I know this is a super long video, and I, I try to get organized in these, but my, my mind just runs all over the place. The next video will hopefully be a video on me doing some customizations and then making some suggestions on some, on some things that I would do differently if there was a run to of this. But who knows? All right, folks, peace out. Have a good one.